today we'd like to do for you just a Black History Month spotlight since the month of February is Black History Month. Now, some of you may be wondering, well, what is Black History Month? Why do we celebrate it? What is it about? Well, today we'd just like to tell you about it and just highlight just a couple parts of African American history. And because it is chapel and it is a worship chapel, we like to highlight worship. So, Black History Month, or National African American History Month, is an annual celebration of achievements of Black African, African Americans or Black Americans, and it is a time for recognizing the central role of African Americans in U.S. history. This event grew out of Negro History Week, which was the brainchild of a great historian named Carter G. Woodson. He was working on this with other prominent African Americans. He initially chose February to coincide with Abraham Lincoln's birthday and Frederick Douglass's birthday. Now, since 70, 1976, every U.S. president has recognized February as Black History Month. We, okay. so you might ask, why should we celebrate Black History Month? That's something that's even been in the news since it's been 150 years since slavery ended, 50 years since the Civil Rights Movement, and now we have a black president. And the answer is we should still celebrate Black History Month. And it's because it's a time for blacks to remember the struggle of their ancestors so that they don't take their current freedoms for granted. It's also for those who are not black um, to be able to highlight the history of blacks in America because oftentimes it is either glazed over in history books or it might even be forgotten. And then for those of you who are in Orange County and you might not have an in-depth exposure to black culture, it's a time to enlighten you and make the debunk myths that are there in media about blacks. And it's a time to be able, be able to know that the stereotypical black person is one who is smart, who is successful, beautiful, talented, and has a very rich history. Hmm. So today, as I said, we decided to highlight two main parts of African American history. We are going to talk about music and have a spoken word. So a part of African American history is gospel music. Now, gospel music, it's pretty much what is sung in black churches and all around the world. The music is intended to put you in a spirit of worship and it comes deep within the soul. During slavery time, Worship was the connection between God and it helped the people to know that they were going to make it through the struggle. The songs sung were rooted deep in the pain and sorrow that they were facing. There's a few different types of gospel music. One of them that Bria just mentioned was with spirituals, and that's also called Negro spirituals, and it was work songs, the things that the slaves sung. These songs, these songs were oftentimes codes that they used for the Underground Railroad. An example of that is Steal Away. When they sang that, it meant that we are going to flee tonight. Or even if they sang Go Down Moses. And for those of you that know that Harriet Tubman was Moses. So that meant that we, maybe they would meet Moses as it was, it was a time to flee. So may, many Negro spirituals follow a call and response. And it makes it suitable where you can sing it even in church or you can sing it at a time when you're in the field. The next type of gospel music that we have is traditional and blues. We can kind of combine those two. So traditional gospel music, it's sometimes referred to as black gospel. Now, the father of black gospel, in a way, is Thomas Dorsey. He was the first person to really uh, combine Christian praise with jazz and the blues. Now, this type of music can be sung individually, or it can be sung as a choir, or as call and response, as she mentioned with Negro spirituals. His best known songs are Take My Hand, Precious Lord, which was sung by Mahalia Jackson, a favorite of the Reverend Martin Luther King. Now, I'd like to highlight two traditional gospel music artists that played a prominent role in American history. First, we have Marian Anderson. Now, Mary Anderson, she was a gospel singer, opera singer. She traveled the world singing, and unfortunately, she was banned from singing at the Constitution Hall in Washington, D.C. in 1939. As a result of this, Eleanor Roosevelt decided that she was going to resign from that board at the hall because of this. Now, even though she faced that oppression, 
there was success. She was able to sing at the Lincoln Memorial among 75,000 people. Now, that's a big accomplishment. And she was also one of the first African Americans to sing at the Metropolitan Opera House. The next person we have is Mahalia Jackson. Now, this other gospel singer, she worked as a maid, and she also toured singing around the country, mainly at Baptist churches. She was a multi-million selling artist, and some might think, well, she was very talented, and people were offering her jobs and money to sing other forms of music, but she chose to stick true to who she was and chose to continue to sing the gospel and to sing for Christ. She also had the chance to sing before Dr. King at his I Have a Dream speech. The last type of music we want to highlight is contemporary gospel. This type of music came about in the 1980s, and it's more of an influence that is coming from modern R&B, jazz, blues, and even hip hop. In many of the black churches, you're, that's what you're going to hear today, is going for our praise and worship. You're going to hear artists like Kirk Franklin, Ty Tribbett, Mary Mary, and even Fred Hammond. At this time, we'd like to feature some contemporary gospel music. And for the church that Bria, Anissa, and I go to, this is the type of music that you would hear during our praise and worship at church. What you'll see is probably a little different than maybe the praise and worship at your church or the praise and worship that you have here at chapel. So at this time, please, uh, oh, we have a video for you to listen to. Maya Angelou and will be recited by my mother. 
Now, I'd like to just tell you a little bit about who Maya Angelou so you can really understand where she's coming from. So, Maya Angelou, she was a poet, a playwright, an actress. And she, um, she's noted for uh, her biographies, for example, I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings. Now, she was the composer and she wrote the screenplay for a well-known play called Georgia. Now, she was also the Northern Coordinator for Dr. King, and if you don't understand what that means, she organized just what was going on during that time in the North. Um, she also won a Pulitzer Prize in 1972 for her poems, and she was able to read one of her poems at Bill Clinton's inauguration. Now, please turn your attention to my mother as she recites a poem, Still I Rise. Still I Rise by Maya Angelou. You may write me down in history with your bitter, twisted lies. You may trod me in the very dirt, but still, like dust, I'll rise. Does my sassiness upset you? Why are you beset with glue? Cause I walk like I've got oil wells pumping in my living room? Just like the moon and the sun with the certainty of tides, just like hope springing high, still I'll rise. Did you want to see me broken, bowed head and lowered eyes, shoulders falling down like teardrops, weakened by my soulful cries? Does my haughtiness offend you? Don't you take it awful hard? Cause I laugh like I've got gold mines pumping in my own backyard. You may shoot me with your words. You may cut me with your eyes. You may kill me with your hatefulness. But still, like air, I'll rise. Does my sexiness upset you? Does it come as a surprise? Nah. Cause I dance like I've got diamonds at the meeting of my thighs. Out of the huts of history's shame, I rise. Up from a past that's rooted in pain, I rise. I am a black ocean, leaping and wide, welling and swelling, I bear with the tide. Leaving behind nights of terror and fear, I rise. Into a daybreak that's wondrously clear, I rise, bringing the gifts that my ancestors gave. I am the dream and the hope of the slave. I rise, I rise, I rise. Thank you.